Today I fucked up by causing the crows in my city to hate police officers. Well this was actually a couple of Halloweens ago. So a couple of Halloweens ago I decided to dress up as a cop. It was a costume from a popular Halloween store, not a very well-made costume mind you. I go to the Halloween event and meet up with a couple of my friends. Now we decided that we were going to celebrate Halloween by getting some nice drinks that make people become drunk idiots. My friends are also using the same crappy costume as me, this will be relevant later. So we went and had a good time drinking and drinking until we were a little bit more drunk than we should be. We left the bar and went to a nearby Halloween event happening outdoors. Now mind you we were really drunk as skunks. We hung out and talked to people, at least I think, I don't remember much of this part because drunk. After a while we saw a bunch of crows. Now I don't know why we had this idea but we decided that we would run at the crows and screaming at them. It seemed like a good idea at the time because we were drunk. The crows flew off and probably would have been okay if we hadn't seen them later on as we were walking home. Yes, we ran into the same crows again, I assume anyway. As we were walking home we saw a bunch of crows congregating around some food. Being the drunk idiots we were, we decided to chase them away from their food, because everyone loves being chase away when they are eating food upside down face. You would think that would be the end of the story, but as many people know, crows do not forget. So about a month after that party I saw a bunch of crows hanging around a cop car, remember that my friends and I were dressed up in cop costumes. When the cops got back from getting some coffee, the crows started swarming the cops and being general jerks to them. I didn't think too much of it at the time. About two months later I saw another incident, around where I work this time. I was driving on the highway to work and I saw the cops had pulled someone over for speeding. As they got out of their car to talk to the speeder, a bunch of crows came out of nowhere and started literally clawing at the dude. They were really being aggressive. The cop basically had a look on his face like he was saying F it and went back to his car. For the next several months I have seen numerous groups of crows picking on cops across the city. Eventually I put together that the crows we picked on when we were in cop costumes had told their fellow crows to pick on anyone wearing a similar outfit. Too long did not read. I accidentally caused crows to have a very intense hatred towards the police in my city because I drunkenly harassed them on Halloween a few times while dressed up as police with my friends. Edited to be a better summary. Edit 1. I assume the very loud party made it hard for the birds to sleep. Also, it was the same amount of birds both times which made me assume it was the Sam ones. I don't remember how many now because I was drunk 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 drunk. Step 1. Dress up as someone I hate. Step 2. Harass crows. Step 3. Have a personal crow army. Everett Washington? Crows tell other crows, too. It lasts for generations. I like the idea of anarchist crows. Hey it's all fun and games until someone has to investigate a murder pages but seriously, a few fines get levied, I'm fine with that. Team Crow. They are absurdly smart, even in some really specific ways. Around here they eat lambs alive. Farmers are often having to euthanize ones who've had their eyes, lips, anus and other soft bits eaten. Just be glad they are smart enough to hate the uniform, not form a posse and hunt you down. Note to self. Dress up like police officers with a group of friends and harass the local corvid population, praxis. That's it. I'm getting five pet crows. I want my own aviary army. Based ACAB crows. Today I fucked up by ignoring an headache, and getting entire ur to be locked down. Well not actually today, more like seven years ago. The day started pretty normal. I had a day off from work and a full schedule on how to get the best out of it. The plan was to do all the boring stuff that I had to take care of right in the morning. Seeing my girlfriend for a bit after that and then in the evening to go to my first ever live soccer game with friends. I'm not a soccer fan but I never been to a big event like that and was super excited about it. So I started the day by going to dentist in the morning. Had a broken teeth from hitting myself by mistake with a piece of iron but that's a story for a different tifu. Right after the dentist I noticed my head starting to hurt I linked it to the dentist visit and didn't think about it much. But as the day passed the pain got stronger and stronger and by the time I saw my girlfriend I was in a extreme pain but I didn't want to miss the event that I was so excited about and thought my friends will see a headache as a lame excuse for bailing. So I took a shower, I remember feeling the water hitting my head and it felt like knives dropping on my head, drank like 5 cups of coffee and took more painkillers than I can remember and headed out. 
By the time we got to game the pain was intolerable I walked from the car to the stadium and my vision was blurry and every sound felt like someone is pushing screwdriver through my ear. When we got to the entrance I told them I'm in too much pain and gonna rest in the car and they should head in, from here my memory is kinda fuzzy. One of them called me just as the game began to see if I'm going to join them I don't remember how the call went but I probably sounded horrible because, to my luck, he decided to leave everything and take me to the hospital ASAP. When we arrived at the hospital I was already passing out to minutes at a time and suffered a lot when awake but for some reason the doctor at the ER decided to give me ibuprofen and wait. The friend who took me there said something like, I know him for a long time and if he is acting this way, ibuprofen won't do anything to him. He meant that my tolerance for pain is high and I won't react that way for something ibuprofen could fix. But the doctor interpretation for that was completely different seeing two dudes in the middle of the night obviously from a poor neighborhood so it is probably drugs. So the doctor wanted a urine test to check for drugs and by that time I couldn't control my body or barely move let alone pee on command. The doctor ego was hurt from me, refusing to give urine test. Mind you I was so out at this point that all I'm writing from here is based on what my friend and mom, got there when she heard, told me. So the night passed, lots of people coming and going from the ER, doctors, nurses, cleaning crews, patients, and the doctor still refused to check on me until I give urine test. Then my mom suggested they should just insert catheter and do the test and they did and for the doctor's surprise I was clean. That's when they started running tests on me like crazy and got to the conclusion it was meningitis well apparently there are two prime reasons for meningitis viruses or bacteria and because I didn't showed any head trauma there was no reason to suspect bacteria. The bacteria needs a way to get inside your head. And because I worked as a construct worker at the border there was every reason to suspect a wild virus. So the decision was made and the ER went into lockdown nobody could go in or out. They located everyone that was in the ER at the same time as me and already left to let them know they cannot leave their homes or come in contact with anyone. And as I said the doctor refused the check on me for a lot of time so many people already passed through the ER. Remember that was pre-COVID nobody was in a situation like this before people were freaking out nurses bursted into tears fighting on who will take blood from me or give me an IV. Full terror mode was in the ER when patients who wanted to get out were fighting with doctors and security it took few hours for the test results to come back and free everyone. I woke up like two days after could barely move from pain but still couldn't stop laughing my ass off as I heard that. Just realized I didn't explain how it was bacteria after all. Well I had a brain surgery done on me like five years before that. The surgery was done completely through the nose and apparently the doctors who done the surgery did an amazing job but somehow didn't close the space between the inside of my nose to me brain leaving it exposed to bacteria. TLR I ignored headache until it was so severe I couldn't communicate. Doctors thought it was a wild virus and the entire ER went into lockdown for a few hours. Edit. Wow went to bed didn't expect to wake up to this at all. Thanks to everyone wishing me well it's been a long time since and I'm perfectly fine I got off really easy from my understanding of it. Worst permanent damage I have is tinnitus which is rather easy comparing to other cases. I have to head out to work soon so I can't reply to everything so I'll try to give more info to respond to some comments here. The first surgery happened when I was 13 this incident happened when I was 18 I'm 25 now. As to why I'm not upset with the first doctor leaving it open I had a benign tumor in a very complicated area behind my eye and nose touching the brain and as I said I'm coming from pretty poor city so following advice from a drive at local hospital I did the surgery in a pretty far city that had more money and of course better doctors that meant that my mom couldn't afford being with me a lot of the time and I was alone, 13 year old kid with no one to speak for me. Original plan was to have open head surgery to remove it fairly young doctor, 30 plus insisted and argued with most of the doctors he could do it through the nose leaving me with much less damage and much easier recovery and he did. He was super nice the all way and checked up on me constantly I'm thankful for him and not holding any grudge towards him. As to why I refused to give urine sample I didn't I just couldn't. The doctor took it as me refusing. To anyone who think there is no way the ER went into lockdown over it I live in a Middle Eastern country all our borders with third world countries and one with Northern Africa I'm not a medical expert and I honestly didn't do much research afterwards but from what I understood they were fearing I caught something working on the border fence. They mentioned something about it killing villages in Africa. It could have been inexperienced decision as well I'm honestly not an expert and have no idea as to why they responded the way they did. But the ER was definitely under lockdown doctors and nurses couldn't stop making fun of the mess I made coming in. 
As to why nurses were crying not wanting to take blood or give me an IV well apparently passed out me was an asshole who kept resisting, took out needles from my arm and got blood on one of the nurses. I don't think nurses here have much medical knowledge and getting blood on you from a patient that just got the entire department into lockdown sound like extremely stressful position to be in. I saw few people sent me DMs I have to go to work now but I promise to answer when I get back. Edit 2 I don't know why I feel a urge proving myself to strangers online and kinda feel shame that I do. But anyway here's a picture of some of my medical diagnosis I can't provide any more proofs without exposing personal information. If I missed any personal info in the picture please be nice and DM me ASAP skeptical smiley face. Pick. That's terrifying. I can't believe it took 5 years for you to end up in the hospital with a hole in your sinuses like that. The takeaway is if you have ever had brain surgery maybe you shouldn't ignore headaches. I had viral meningitis when I was 4, and that shit is no joke. That afternoon I was perfectly fine, and that evening I was seeing pink elephants dancing on the back of the couch. I really don't remember much of it. I remember the rest stop we stopped at that afternoon on our drive home, and I remember spending three days bored off my ass in the hospital. In 1975. With no cable. Apparently in between those I ran a fever of 105 and spent 7 days in a coma, and the doctor has zero idea as to why I didn't spend the rest of my life in a persistent vegetative state. I loved this house episode. I always have to think of that one Scrubs episode, where DJ suspects SARS and everyone gets fucking angry at him like, you can never let the word SARS pass your lips, man, that's how we get locked down. Well, look at us now. It always surprises me how some doctors react like such assholes. I remember reading a Today I Fucked Up a while ago about some guy who lost his wife who had a severe epilepsy because the ER doctor was convinced she was on drugs and wouldn't listen to the husband. I'm a med student and started working at the hospital this year and the thing I probably heard the most is that if I don't have the patient's consent to do a test or something I should just move on and do the most that I can do or give the diagnosis and start the treatment based on the symptoms, history, clinical exam. Some doctors really have a fragile ego that they start acting like little babies and risk people's lives for such stupid things. I'm glad you're okay now and hope you're going great. So basically TTDFU, today the doctor fucked up. Had viral meningitis and encephalitis at the same time. Hospitalized for 9 months. You don't have to explain anything to me. Today I fucked up by not using a condom. Obligatory this happened about a month ago, but I'm feeling the effects today. So a little background, I live in a pretty rural area that has some smaller college towns scattered around it. I spent a lot of my life there, but my cousin, and closest friend, grew up in the area and is pretty popular, so whenever I came to visit in middle school, high school I'd usually hang with him and his friends. For whatever reason, I've always been very popular with his female friends, and it's been a running joke between us that he needs to hide me from his female friends because I've had multiple flings with many of them. Does that make me a bad person? Probably. But they're all really cute so I feel like it's defensible. Anyways, about a month ago I went out partying with him and one of his few female friends I actually never got with. She was always very sweet and she's clearly really smart, so I was very surprised when she started being extremely forward and somewhat vulgar with me. She was saying, I really want someone to dick me down, and other very clear signals that she wanted to hook up. At first, I just kinda played it off and didn't plan on doing anything with her at all but after a few shots and a night of dancing, I was feeling some type of way, blame the tequila. We go back to her place, hang out for a while, and one thing leads to another and I'm in her bedroom. It all happened fast, we were both slightly drunk at this point, and we neglected to use a condom. This is very out of character for me because I always make sure I'm safe, but this time I justified the behavior by thinking to myself, oh she's always been sweet, I trust her, she's smart, this shouldn't be a problem. Boy was I wrong. About five days ago, it started to feel like hot fire whenever I took a piss. Four days ago, it burned even when I wasn't taking a piss. Three days ago, my one-eyed monster started leaking this nasty white shit and I knew that something was very wrong. Immediately knowing I had some kind of STI or STD, I took my diseased ass to the clinic and got treatment for chlamydia. I'm really only scared of a few things. I'm generally a brave person. But on that short list are two things I really don't fuck with, STDs and needles. Just my luck that they treat chlamydia with a shot to the ass. Now I'm on antibiotics that make me feel like shit and my hiney hurts, but not as much as my pride. Too long did not read.
I fucked a girl with no condom, paid the price by contracting chlamydia. Edit. Some of you guys are saying I should let her know, and you're right. As soon as I knew for sure what was going on, I let her know. She took it well, I think she already knew. Also edit. Talk to my doc about an hour ago. Since the test results weren't immediate, the shot to my gluteus maximus was for gonorrhea, just in case, and then a round of antibiotics that would treat both the clap and urea plasma, if I had either. Either way I feel 100% better, just have to finish my antibiotics so I don't create the super clap. Oof, good job it was something treatable, for now. My brother slept with someone in college. A week later she told him she had the clap and for him to get tested. He went to the student center, came back negative. Weff. Here's where it gets funny. He thought it was free and didn't realize a bill, summary of treatment would be sent to my parents, still on their health insurance. So he went around to all his friends and was like, hey, y'all should get tested to be safe, it's free. Dot. I don't remember if it was actually free or not, probably depends on each student's insurance situation. But like four of his friends all got test results mailed to their parents' houses. Led to some interesting conversations. Everyone laughed it off eventually. Not to downplay your stress, you'll be okay. Just reminded me of this and I cracked up. This could be a condom PSA. The story is rarely they were super gross and dirty and I just said F it. I love the penis led logic that leads you to conclude the girl who has been saying things like, I really want someone to dick me down, can't possibly be promiscuous because she has always been sweet, and so is safe to fuck without protection tears of joy. My man with that kind of reasoning you need a chaperone? Man sucks to be you. Hopefully you learn a lesson from this. Always carry a condom and if you're too drunk to care about wearing one don't have sex. You're lucky it was just applause. Other genital germs don't go away. What percent of today I fucked up posts are sexual? 99%? You suffered the smallest possible consequence for this mistake. Learn from it so you never make it again. Chlamydia is pretty easy to treat with no long-term side effects. You could have contracted a much more serious STI or gotten her pregnant. Common birth control isn't 100% effective and the efficacy decreases with typical use versus perfect use. Taking a birth control pill at a different time of day will reduce its efficacy. Always wear a condom. Pro tip. If she isn't insisting on you wearing a condom she probably doesn't always wear condoms with other sexual partners. That's even more reason for you to take the initiative.